Hi, everyone. It's been a busy year since the last GDC. Back in October, we shipped UE 5.3. Then, in December, we launched Fortnite Chapter 5, along with LEGO Fortnite, Rocket Racing, and Festival in our Big Bang event. And now, we're about to ship UE 5.4. Everything we shipped over last year has made UE a better engine for you and the entire community of Unreal developers. So let's take a look at what's coming. On the rendering side, we just saw some of the beautiful scenes in the Skydance demo. They showed what can be achieved with nanite tessellation. There were also nice volumetric effects using our heterogeneous volume feature. In 5.4, you'll also get other features like local fog volumes and Niagara lightweight emitters, just to name a few. But most importantly, we've made a lot of performance improvements. We now have faster lumen, shadows, and ray tracing. We've added variable rate shading for nanite. We massively improved instance culling and we significantly improved parallelism in the renderer. You name it, we made it faster. With a city sample demo that shipped in 5.0, our console tests showed that the render thread time was reduced by 50%, and the GPU time decreased by 25%. Now, let's talk about animation. Over the past year, our team has been hard at work on a world-class update to our animation systems, and I'm happy to share that our motion matching technology is now production ready. Motion matching is a simple yet powerful way to animate characters in games. Instead of handcrafted state machines, motion matching continuously selects the best frame of animation to play from its motion database. It aims to closely match the current pose of the character as well as its past and future movement. Our implementation scales with the size of your data set to reach the high fidelity you need, and it uses pose warping algorithms to fill in the gaps. But Motion matching is a tool for more than just locomotion. As you can see here, it's used for jumping, falling, and complex traversal. We use 3D trajectory prediction to produce seamless transitions with anticipation and long follow throughs. And this results in much more believable animation. We've also built world-class authoring and debugging tools, like the Rewind Debugger, that allows you to record, inspect, and edit your motion databases to understand and improve your transitions. The motion matching system has been battle tested and is ready for prime time. It has been in use in Fortnite since the launch of Chapter 5 in December, running on all characters on all platforms. And to help you get started, we will be releasing a sample project based on what you've seen today. This project will include over 500 AAA animations created from high-end motion capture data with the locomotion and traversal data set used in this demo. Best of all, it will be free for all Unreal Engine developers and compatible with the MetaHuman rig. <laughs> now, a lot about creating a game is about telling a story. To bring their ideas and visions to life, storytellers must iterate constantly and efficiently. They must be able to get the right animation, the right camera angle, and the perfect lighting that completes the scene. We've been investing in our animation authoring tools with Control Rig and Sequencer, and we've now reached a very important milestone. For the first time, a full game production, LEGO Fortnite, was rigged and animated entirely in engine with no external DCC used. And so far, we've produced over 240 minutes of animation for LEGO Fortnite across gameplay, emotes, cinematics, and trailers. Working entirely in Unreal Engine means there is no round tripping with an external DCC, no exporting. Being able to see everything in context, lighting, camera, animation, iterating and making changes in real time with final pixels is a real game changer. But our animators always tell us that behind every great animation is a great rig. In Unreal Engine 5.4, creating rigs becomes much quicker and easier than before with modular control rigs. <laughs> Creators also have the ability to author skeletons and skin weights and take advantage of our new suite of deformers to help achieve fundamental rig features such as squatch and stretch. These tools have changed the way we bring our stories to life. 
and we're excited to share them with you. With games getting bigger with more complex content, developer iteration will always be top of mind. We've significantly improved C++ completion times with the help of our new Unreal Build Accelerator for highly performant distributed code builds. On our build farm, we now see that Unreal Editor compiles two to three times faster. You'll also be happy to hear that we compile far fewer shaders in the editor as well as during cooks. And finally, we improved the onboarding process for Unreal Cloud DDC for large distributed teams. We've been quite busy on the audio front, too. MetaSounds was the foundation for audio in all our new experiences. We had granular synthesized vehicles in rocket racing, a simple accurate weapon overall in Battle Royale, dynamic ambience and music in LEGO Fortnite, rhythm games in Festival and Jam, and 3D user-created music in UEFN's Password. And to help sound designer understand, debug, and create powerful next-gen audio, we're shipping a new experimental audio profiling tool called Audio Insights. If you're a sound designer and want to make something truly unique and immersive, MetaSounds is the right tool for you. <laughs> now, let's talk about the procedural content generation framework which we released as experimental last year. With PCG, artists can build vast worlds efficiently in a completely art-directable way. Using a node graph to set up parameterized rule sets, you can create fast, iterative, and deterministic procedural content, even at runtime. For 5.4, we added new features such as runtime hierarchical generation, attribute set tables, feedback loops, and the list goes on. We use the PCG framework in our internal production, including LEGO Fortnite. In fact, the team developed their own world creation system using PCG to craft their massive environments. Their system generates a vast amount of unique tiles, which are then assembled on the fly to compose a unique world for each player to experience. Our learnings translate into new ways for you to use a framework, develop new tools, and create your own gameplay opportunities. To get you started, we are also releasing a PCG Biome creation plugin as a concrete example of a flexible, data-driven tool with a build, uh, built with a systemic approach featuring the latest improvement. So, so we're happy to announce that the PCG framework is going better with UE5.4 and planning to be production ready by GDC 2025. Speaking of LEGO Fortnite, the game has been an amazing opportunity to battle test and improve some of our features. Chaos Physics was heavily optimized to support large-scale building and destruction with a new prediction model to create fewer and smoother corrections for physics objects. It's worth noting that the multiplayer physics sandbox runs server-side and therefore provides coherent and performance simulation on all platforms. Our data-oriented programming framework called MASS was put to the test to simulate and hold more than 6 million lightweight actors. And finally, we optimized the engine storage, memory usage, and perfs, resulting in LEGO Fortnite working great across all platforms, including mobile. With all of this work, Unreal Engine is now even better for your own ambitious cross-platform projects. I hope you enjoyed this short glimpse of all the cool things our teams have been working on. I invite you all to check out Preview 1 of Unreal Engine 5.4, available today, with the full release coming in a month or so. To get a deeper dive into our animation updates, join us for our tech talk later this afternoon, and check out our talks at our learning theater in our booth over at Moscone. And as always, you can visit our roadmap to learn more about the future of Unreal Engine. Okay.